Greetings, this is July 21st. We are looking at NASA's FIRM's Fire Information for Resource Management System at the new MODIS that comes in after 12.30 a.m. This is the MODIS Terra. And I'll turn on all the satellite systems so that we can go back a day, look at yesterday, look at what just came in, and compare and see whether or not the fire is expanding in any specific direction. I've clicked on the advanced tab so I can see the date and the date bar at the bottom of the screen. So now we're looking at yesterday's infrared. We see the clusters of VIIRS and the clusters of MODIS. Now it's switching to today. And there we see the MODIS and it's expanded eastward in the forested block. So when the new VIIRS comes in, it'll probably fill in those areas. And those squares do not mean that uh, the entire square has been ignited. It just means that heat was detected somewhere within that square. And we may not be seeing all the data. It can be obscured by smoke and cloud. And finally, the heat detection may be off position uh, by as much as 750 meters to a kilometer. We've seen them in water. Now we're looking at South Central BC. That's the air lakes in the center of the screen. This is yesterday's heat detections, and now we're rolling into today. I do see some expansion on the Octopus Creek fire. That's just above center on the screen on the east side of Arrow Lake. We've moved up to the North Okanagan, the Shushwap, and rolling into today. Difficult to see at this altitude. Um, I would recommend uh, going to the link below in the description to the NASA's firm system and zoom into the area. You'll be able to see more detailed satellite imagery. We're moving westward now to two fires that are visible at this elevation. We're looking at the Flat Lake Fire to the left of the screen and in the lower right that's the Sparks Lake Fire. Here is all the satellite information from yesterday and now looking at today. It's difficult to see so we'll zoom in. This is the Flat Lake Fire perimeter from yesterday and rolling into today. And it does look like expansion eastward towards Highway 97. We'll zoom in further. This is yesterday's infrared. You, we can see that uh, uh, vertical infrastructure line coming down and there it goes to the highway. The squares are 750 meters and what this indicates is that somewhere within that square heat was detected. We're looking at the southeast flank of the fire on an approach to Cunningham Lake at the bottom of the screen. This is yesterday's infrared and now the new MODIS heat detections and I'm not seeing any expansion more uh, infrared may be in place so we'll have to wait for the VIIRS to come in to see if it fills in or if there's any movement in that detection. We've moved northeast we're looking at Canham Lake to the southeast of Canham Lake and then up above Eagle Creek towards Lang Lake. There's also another one at Taway Park and now we're rolling into today's infrared. Just seeing aging in place, I hope that's a good sign and that uh, there's a reduction in wind there, uh, not cloud cover obscuring it. Now we're moving south. We're looking at Cache Creek and Ashcroft in the upper left-hand side and then Lytton in the lower left-hand side and then over at the White Rock Lake fire east of Merritt on the left-hand side. This is yesterday's infrared and now today's. Again, there's movement eastward on those southwest winds. Uh, let's zoom in. This is the White Rock Lake fire. It's moving up a valley. We can see Falkland in the upper right-hand corner and today very slight movement east and north. Keep in mind each one of those squares represents 750 meters, so they do represent a significant amount of territory. We're now looking at the Tremont Creek Fire with Walsheen and Savannah 
to the right hand side of the screen and Cash Creek and Ashcroft to the left hand side of the screen. This is yesterday's infrared and now rolling into today. It's very difficult to tell. It looks like it may be aging in place. Uh, this is where a ground report is going to be necessary. If this is an area where you need more information, check out the links below. Go to BC Wildfire and, uh, and look at the situation page for the Tremont Creek Fire. And now we've moved south to the Lytton Fire. We've seen uh, rapid eastward movement. It's going up the hillside. And looking at today's infrared, it does appear to have made movement northwards in latitude. And it also appears to have gone up the mountainside to the right and maybe approaching the peak. It appears just south of the Soap Lake Ecological Reserve. So we'll have to take a look at the uh, VIIRS when that comes in, see if it fills out those areas or whether it confirms the position of these fire locations. I'm only seeing one dot east of the Kiefer's location, uh, Kanaka Bar, that area, and I am seeing a few in a small cluster uh, at that fire that was located about halfway up the Coquihalla. As well, there's a couple of hot spots that keep popping up in the lower portion of the screen. They're just northwest of Cathedral Lakes. On a positive note, I am only seeing uh, one cluster of infrared up in the Tweedsmer area and nothing on Vancouver Island or on the coastal region. And it seems so strange this year because they are not immune and uh, it's still wildfire season so they have to be very mindful of uh, forest behavior and watch out for potential lightning storms as well. We've jumped now to a screen from Windy and there you can see on the coast relative calm and as well over on the eastern right hand portion of the screen most of those gusts and turbulent uh, air movement is coming in the center of the province in a big long band. If you're in the south, it's coming from the west and then fanning out, heading northeast and to the southeast. And if you're in the 100 mile house area, winds can come down from the north and the northwest. They can meet up with those western winds and winds coming up from the south and everything pushes east. And looking at the forecast, winds look to be heaviest in the afternoon, predominantly from the west. Uh, some variation coming a little bit from the south, a little bit from the north. And uh, there could be a potential wind shift at about 8 p.m. Looks like it may come strong with gusts. And that's associated with uh, some cloud activity. And dare I say it, it's showing little rain droplets there. I don't know. I'll uh, believe it when I see it. I'll bring a bucket. There is a lightning monitor in the description below uh, just to track any activity that might be passing through. And... Please remember if you're north or east and uh, potentially even southeast of some of these fire zones, be aware of your access routes and what's uh, between you and the fire line. Check out Drive BC and the BC Wildfire situation pages. Thank you very much for watching. Please be safe and keep your nose to the breeze.